This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. For the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time space continuum to this place that I call the X Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the X Zone comes to you worldwide on the X Zone Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast affiliates and satellite programming providers. If you'd like to send us an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all members of the social media network out there in Never Neverland, Exxon Radio TV. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is Robert Robinson. We're going to be talking to Robert about his book entitled Legend Tripping, The Ultimate Family Experience. And Robert, welcome to the Exxon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, my great pleasure. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a uh, retired military. I served in the United States Army mm-hmm. for uh, uh, 21, over 21 years. Uh, I'm an Army brat, so uh, my mother's from England, uh, actually from Scotland. Right. And I've kind of lived all over the place before I went in the military and after. And uh, upon uh, retiring from the military, I... Uh, Retired down to uh, Florida, where I'm now a JRTC instructor, and I'm also able to go ahead and pursue my uh, interest in the cryptozoology, the paranormal, ufology, and all kinds of stuff, which I narrowed it all down into a term called legend tripping. All right, so tell me, what was it that, that sparked your interest originally and got you on your quest into investigating the paranormal? Uh, well, as a kid... Um, my parents took me to go see this 1972 movie called The Legend of Boggy Creek. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those who don't know about it, it's about a Bigfoot-type monster that was to, put into it was a documentary, documentary-style movie about a Bigfoot in Arkansas. And it, it actually just it scared me. It scared me pretty good. Wow. But, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> and what happened was I, uh, I didn't like being scared of stuff, so I started mm-hmm. reading up about Bigfoot and all the others. And I stopped being scared and actually started getting very, very intrigued with it. And I continued on with it. I watched other uh, movies like Mysterious Monsters and uh, the popular TV show In Search Of. And uh, it just kind of, you know, it was one of the things I enjoyed reading while, while I was still in, you know, grade school and high school. So, so tell and, me, uh, uh, over the years, have you ever seen a Bigfoot? Or have you ever seen a UFO? Uh, what, is, what is it that you find so compelling that they're real enough to pursue a career in this? Well, I guess the bottom line, uh, before I talk about my Bigfoot sighting, mm-hmm. is I don't, I, don't, I don't think this world of ours is all cut and dry the way scientists have got it all, everything figured out. I still believe there is some mystery in the world. You know, uh, a gentleman by the name of Charles Fort wrote a book mm-hmm. uh, called Book of the Damned, and yep. he showed everybody that you know our world is not entirely figured out, as the expression goes. Yeah, but but no, but no offense, Charles Fort wrote that book in the early, the early years of this century, and a lot has changed mm-hmm. since then. And conventional science have still yet to prove the existence of any of the monsters or any of the creatures that Charles Fort wrote about. Mm-hmm. Oh, I you, I understand. In fact, that's the whole definition of cryptozoology, Mm -hmm. you know, the science of undiscovered uh, animals. 
which you know some people considered a, a pseudoscience mm-hmm. of zoology, uh, because you know there's in the scientific community these animals you know in their eyes can't possibly exist for virtue you know reasons of uh, you know Bigfoot for example. You know, there's, there, in their eyes, there's no way a large 10-foot bipedal creature can be hiding in our woods without any definitive proof coming mm-hmm. out there. Well, um, you know, it's kind of funny that there, with all the modern technology that we have at our disposal today, the the smoking gun or the proof positive that Bigfoot is out there still evades us. No, you're absolutely right, sir. It still hasn't come there. And uh, uh, my, you know... The only thing I think of, and again, mm-hmm. I'm no, you know, I'm not, I don't have a degree in science. I only have a, a, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. But my own personal, you know, because I do go out looking for a Bigfoot, is I, I, I think these animals are starting to die off. With the man and all the, uh, you know, encroaching we've gone on, you know, and right. all the stuff that's going on with the planet, I, I, I don't think there's as many out there as there used to be of but, these creatures. But if they're dying off, and I'm going to leave you with this question, I've got to take my first commercial break. If yes, they are dying off, uh, Robert, like like you hypothesize, why is it that we have not found the remains of a Bigfoot to prove their existence? Well, to be honest, you know, you don't find any bones. You rarely find any bones of anything. You never find bones of a bear. You never find bones of a panther. The only time that they've ever ever really recovered bones. Mm-hmm. Are you there, Robert? Yes. Okay, stand by, Robert. We've got to take our commercial break. Exo Nation, okay. Robert Robinson is our special guest. We're going to be talking about legend tripping, the ultimate family experience this hour with Robert. And uh, we'll both be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exo from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the X-Zone radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, 
then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. And welcome back, everyone. Robert Robinson is our special guest this hour. He's the author of Legend Tripping, The Ultimate Family Experience. His website is legendtrippingofamerica.blogspot.com. You know, we were talking briefly about finding the cadaver or the remains of of a Bigfoot, and you said, well, nobody's found the remains of a bear, and I hate to uh, say this, but yes, remains of bears have been found by the U.S. Forest Service as well as the Canadian Forestry Department and uh, and other wildlife officials. So if if these bear cadavers and remains can be found, how come, if Bigfoot is real, no proof? Well, you know, like you said before, we've yet to prove this animal is out there. Mm-hmm. I personally believe it's out there. But uh, there's still a lot of questions that a lot of people, you know, just theorize. Yeah. Um, the animal, I, I, I do know this animal is very, very shy of humans. So whenever it usually it does take, you know, it usually takes off or starts running away or, or exits the area when it knows humans are there most of the time. So, I mean, all I can theorize, mm-hmm. you know, with that question is that when these animals do go to die, they do go back in the woods away from where any, you know, humans could do it, kind of like the old elephant graveyard type of scenario. Again, but that's just, gotcha. uh, you know, a theory that I have. Well, but again, you know, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, well, I was going to say, what is it that compels you to pursue this legendary creature? Um, when I was a kid, like I said, I saw the legend of Boggy Creek, and then my uncle, he had a sighting. And it just really, really fascinated me just hearing him tell the story. Mm-hmm. In fact, I still love it to this day when he tells a story about seeing it. But it just intrigued me to when I wanted to go see it. Um, you know, I, I went out one time, and I had, we had an, uh, an animal out in the woods that me and my son saw that had glow. It, it was when we had our night vision on, and we could see its glowing eyes. Yeah. And whatever the animal was, was a good, I'm, I'm going to say I'm five foot seven. was probably good to... Well, about seven feet. I'm just going to estimate. Mm-hmm. And this is when we were out in the uh, uh, swamps here in Florida. Um, the area that it was, it was a real swampy area. We could hear the animal walking around in the woods. I mean, in, excuse me, in the water, and it sounded bipedal. Um, the bears down here are not known for going through the water, especially at night. The uh, the only animal that would really even attempt to do that, other than the alligator. Mm-hmm are the deer down here. And I just don't think it was a deer because the animal let off a, a really uh, a scream when we hit it with a flashlight. So, Okay, what did you but, see when you hit it with a flashlight? Huh? Uh, well, the, the flashlight, let me say that again. We hit it with a red light, mm-hmm. and we, we didn't really see it, but uh, it let out a scream. And, of course, me and my, my son um, realized that we didn't have anything with us to, you know, at this was, say, hypothetically a bear. Mm-hmm. So we decided, you know, caution was, you know, so we decided we might want to, we decided to go ahead and try to walk ourselves back out of the area. Gotcha, gotcha. But now I now I always have bear mace with me when I'm out there. <laughs> Good idea, good idea. But is it safe to actually go out there and try and find this legendary creature with other animals, uh, animals of prey that are in the same area where you're going and doing your, uh, your, your, uh, your investigation? Um, I think it is. And again, you know, a, a lot of it's just preparation. And, mm-hmm. you know, when we do go out, we do stay in teams. We don't branch off by ourselves. Um, the animals uh, sightings are extremely rare. The, uh, the Florida panther... Unfortunately, they're down to about 30 of them down here. Most of them are located down in the Florida Everglades, uh, a little bit, uh, quite a ways from where I've been looking at it. Um, the bears, we, we have had some bear sightings, but they, they, uh, they're, they're not as large as they are up north. But as far as, you know, taking a family, I've never had an issue with anything down, you know, that's dangerous. Maybe mm-hmm. the only animal I can think of right off the bat that we, we really have to watch out for when we're down there 
is the alligator, but as long as we don't go into the water,